Hello, my name is Obsidiman, and this is my comprehensive Interstellar Rift tutorial, the series giving you the tools to excel at the game. This episode is all about automation, including how to automate certain devices, and how to use automatic cargo transfer relays to move items around within a ship. In order to make a device operate automatically, first obtain an automation cartridge for the device. There are five types of automation cartridge. Extraction, processing, printing, teleportation, and drone bay. Every automation cartridge can be 3D printed using 10 each of silicon, gold, and silver. Drone bay automation won't be covered in this video due to its complexity. Instead, it will be covered in the video about the drone bay itself. Extraction cartridges are used by extractors and salvage units, processing cartridges by refineries and assemblers, printing cartridges by 3D printers, and teleportation cartridges are for cargo teleporters. Insert the appropriate cartridge for a device into the device's cartridge slot. Then, left-click the Upgrade button found in the top right of one of the device's screens. This will bring up the automation control screen. The left side of the automation screen is the same for every device. The top left shows the cartridge's durability, displayed as a percentage of total. Below that is the current state of the cartridge, a button to toggle the cartridge on or off, and a button to return to the previous screen. The right side of the screen has a list of all tasks that can be given to the device, which will vary slightly for each device. Above the list is a search box to find a specific item. The extractor can be instructed to automatically mine asteroids containing any asteroid-specific material, barring ores found exclusively in rich asteroids. Left-click an item from the list to select it. If an asteroid containing a selected resource is found within range of the extractor, it will be collected and mined. The extractor will prioritize asteroids based on the order in which the assigned resources are selected, represented by the number next to the selected item. With this configuration, for example, the extractor will first look for an asteroid containing iron, and if none are found, will then look for an asteroid containing copper. Salvage units can be told to collect any type of scrap found in debris fields. Since salvagers are also able to collect crates that have been ejected from a disposer, their automation list also contains all the other resources in the game. They will prioritize salvaging debris in the order that resources are selected in the list. Both refineries and assemblers can be tasked with creating any of their recipes. If the materials needed to make a selected recipe are in the device's input buffer, it will start a processing operation with the maximum yield currently possible. If the required materials for multiple selected recipes are present at once, the device will prioritize whichever recipe is selected first in the list. Like refineries and assemblers, the 3D printer can be set to automatically print any tool in its recipe list. When the required materials for a selected item are present in the device, it will automatically begin printing the item. Priority again goes to whichever recipe is selected first in the automation screen. The upgrade screen for cargo teleporters will show a list of nearby ships, similar to the device's main screen. Selecting a ship will show a list of locations on that ship which cargo can be teleported to. Left-clicking on a location will set it as a destination and multiple destinations can be set at once. Teleportation priority will go to destinations which are selected before others. Cargo will only be teleported to a given destination if all destinations with higher priority are full. When one or more destinations have been selected, any cargo placed on the pad will start a teleport operation. Active automation cartridges will check for a new task every 10 seconds while the device is idle. They will also check for a task every time the device finishes an operation. Automation cartridges have a total duration of 12 hours, after which they will break. They will wear down any time they are turned on, even if the device is idle. However, they don't deteriorate if the device they're installed in has insufficient power. By placing a device you wish to automate in its own power group, along with a sufficient tier power transfer box, you can remotely toggle the device. Request power with the transfer box to turn the device on, and the installed automation cartridge can operate. Cut power to the group to shut the device off, conserving the automation cartridge's durability. 
Automation cartridge settings can be copied from one cartridge to another of the same type using a data core terminal. First, insert the cartridge whose settings you want to copy, and the cartridge you want to copy to. On the left screen, select the original cartridge, and left-click Cartridge Options. Select the cartridge you want to copy to from the panel on the right. Then, press the power button to turn on the prime cartridge. After a few seconds, the recipient cartridge will have the same settings as the original, and both can be removed from the terminal by pressing the Eject button. Automatic Cargo Transfer Relays, or ACTORS for short, are the backbone of automation and production chains. Actors can teleport a single type of resource or tool from multiple sources to multiple destinations within a ship. To function properly, they need to have at least one heatsink installed. Every time an actor teleports, the installed heatsinks will gain heat. The left heatsink will fill first, then the right. When both are at capacity, they will be damaged in the same order. If both heatsinks break, the actor will take damage with each teleport and might start a fire. To configure an actor, first choose the item you want it to teleport. Any resource can be chosen, as well as any tool. Use the search bar to quickly find something specific. Once you've chosen an item, left-click the Select Source button on the left. This will show every room on the ship with a potential source location for the chosen item. Left-clicking on a room will show all the devices in the room that can contain the item. Left-click the checkbox next to a device to select it as a source. The actor will prioritize pulling from sources in the order they were selected, as indicated by the number that appears next to the source. Press back at the top to return to the room list. You can also see how many devices in each room have been selected as a source. Once you've selected all the sources you want, press return. The source panel will now show which source has been selected, or multiple if more than one. It also shows how much storage space in the chosen sources is filled, and which items are present in the sources. This can be useful to help troubleshoot when setting up actors for your ship. Once the sources are set up the way you want, press Select Destination. Configuring the destinations is very similar to the sources. Choose a room, then choose one or more devices in the room to be a destination. The actor will prioritize teleporting to destinations which are selected first. Note that actors cannot teleport heatsinks into other actors, or automation cartridges into devices' cartridge slots. This limitation is intended by the developers to prevent automation without player oversight. Left-click on the name of a destination after selecting it to bring up the destination settings. The first value is the minimum teleport amount. This is the smallest amount of items that the actor will move per teleport. If less than this amount is present at the source location, the actor won't teleport them. The second value is the maximum amount allowed at the destination. Items will only be teleported if this amount or less of the item is already present at the destination. The actor will only teleport up to the amount required to match this value. These settings must be set individually for each selected destination. With the actor configured, press Start on the upper screen to activate it. While active, the actor can teleport items once every 8 seconds. Regardless of the amount or distance teleported, each teleport requires 40,000 units of energy, which charges into the actor beforehand. The actor's current charge can be seen on the upper screen. The status of the installed heatsinks can also be seen here. Let's see an example production chain using automation cartridges and actors in tandem. To help explain, we have special guest and fellow content creator Deathraven. For this example, we will automate mining and refining iron. To start, let's set up the automation cartridges. The extractor will be set to mine asteroids containing iron ore, and the refinery will process the iron ore into iron. Before turning on the automation cartridges, let's set up the ACTRs. The first ACTR will move iron ore from the extractors to the refinery. We'll set the minimum amount to 2400 or 4 crates of iron. Putting a large number here means the ACTRs doesn't teleport as often, so the heatsinks last longer. The max buffer will be 4800 equal to 8 crates of iron ore, so the refinery receives ore until it's filled. 
Asteroids with iron sometimes also have copper and carbon, so we have two ACTRs to move both of them from the extractor to the storage. Otherwise the extractors will clog up and stop mining. Both of these will have a minimum amount of zero so that any amount gets moved, and the max buffer of 4800, the default for cargo pads. The last ACTR will move iron from the refinery to the cargo storage. Since the refinery output holds 4 crates, the minimum amount should be less than this in case a partial crate is outputted. We'll set it to 1200 so the refinery doesn't get clocked while still using the heatsinks efficiently. The max buffer will again be the default of 4800, equal to one full cargo pad. Don't forget to put heatsinks into the ACTRs, then activate them. You can now turn on the automation cartridges and the ship will automatically collect iron ore and refine it. The copper ore can be refined manually, or you can configure ACTRs to do it for you. Be sure to check out Death Raven's channel, where he also has a video discussing automation, as well as other interesting videos to expand your knowledge of the game. Links can be found in the video description. That's the end of today's tutorial video. The next episode will be about all the various functions and features of the grip. If there are any topics you'd like to see covered in a future video, leave your suggestion in a comment below. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to catch the rest of the series.